The one thing that makes developers different than the common people out there is the command line. The moment someone opens up a terminal and types out their first command, they're instantly transformed into a Jedi hacker. In today's video, we'll take things to the next level by building a crazy command line tool from scratch. In fact, you can try out the app we're building right now by running npx fire quiz from your terminal. That's because I deployed it to npm as an executable, and I'll show you how you can too. Now I realize that people will bash me for not using bash in this video, but the Node.js ecosystem has all kinds of awesome tools that can help you build an over-the-top command line tool that'll make people think you're some kind of coding wizard. If you're new here, like and subscribe. Then the first person to win the game of who wants to be a JavaScript millionaire gets a free Fireship hoodie. Let's first take a look at what we're building today. We have a command line tool that animates the text who wants to be a JavaScript millionaire. Then it will prompt you to enter your name. After that, it goes through a series of multiple choice questions. When you enter an answer, it will show a loading spinner. If you get it right, it will continue. But if you get it wrong, it will exit the command line script and call you a loser. If you make it all the way to the end, you win. It will show you some ASCII text with a color gradient and a message that when left in the comments on this YouTube video wins you a free hoodie. To get started with this tutorial, create an empty directory. Now go ahead and open that directory in VS Code, then run npm init flag y. That will create a new package.json file where we can install node dependencies. Now I have a list of packages to install here, and I'll explain what each one does as we get into the code. Inside the package.json, we'll want to change the type to module. Doing that tells Node.js that we want to use ESM modules, allowing us to use the import-export syntax instead of the common JS require function. Now let's create an index.js file for the source code, and inside of it, the first thing we'll do is add a shebang at the top. You'll always want to include one of these when writing a command line script for somebody else to use. It tells the operating system to execute the code with the Node.js version installed on the user's local system. From there, I'm importing all of our dependencies, and the first one that I want to show you how to use is Chalk, which is created by one of the most prolific open source creators out there, Syndrasaurus, an actual code wizard. Its purpose is very simple. It will color the output text in the terminal. There's also a popular alternative called Colors.js, but its most recent version is known to have some pretty strange bugs. Bugs so strange that they got put on the news. So you might want to be careful with that one. Chalk has a bunch of built-in colors, and to change the color of some text, all you have to do is wrap it in the color that you want, or you might use a background color. At this point, let's test it out by opening the terminal and running node index.js, or just node period, and the result should be the highlighted text. Colored text is cool, but what's even better is animated colored text. A package that builds on top of Chalk called Chalk Animation allows us to easily create a rainbow animation, and a bunch of others as well. In the code here, I'm creating a global variable for the player name, then an async function called welcome. The welcome screen will animate the text, who wants to be a JavaScript millionaire? Now, in the terminal, we can only do one thing at a time, and to display an animation, we'll need a couple of seconds to show it to the user. To handle that, I'm creating a helper function here called sleep. It takes an argument of milliseconds that defaults to 2000, and then resolves a promise with a set timeout. You'll see this code in many JavaScript code bases because for whatever reason, JavaScript doesn't implement a promise-based timeout. In any case, we can now call await sleep inside of our function. That allows the rainbow to animate for two seconds, and then we'll call stop to move on to the next step, where we console log the actual instructions for the game. You'll notice I'm using backticks when console logging, which creates a JavaScript template literal. A template literal allows us to interpolate values into the text and also create multi-line logs without manually including line break characters. Now let's go ahead and call our function, but let's also include the await keyword in front of it. That may seem strange because we're using await outside of an async function. That's possible because Node.js supports top-level await. In fact, we could probably write this entire app without defining a single function and just use top-level await for everything, but I do think named functions makes the code more readable. Go ahead and run the script, and you should now get that cool rainbow animation. Now we're going to take a look at another very popular library used in many command line tools called Inquirer. Its job is to collect user input and has a a variety of different ways for doing so. To collect the user's name, we'll first create an inquirer prompt, which can be customized with a variety of different options. You'll first give the data a name, and then the type specifies how that information should be collected. An input is like a form that the user can type into. You can also do things like validate the input or provide a default value as we're doing here. Now, when the promise resolves, it will return the player's name, which is assigned to the global player name variable. Now go ahead and run that function with top level await, and the command line should prompt you for some input. Now, the next thing we'll do is use Inquirer to create multiple choice questions for the quiz. This function will work in almost the exact same way. The only difference is that instead of an input, we're now using a list, which has multiple choices to choose from. 
Now we'll need to handle the UI differently based on whether or not the user selects the correct option. For that, I'm creating another function called handle answer that takes a Boolean as its argument. Inside the function, we'll create a loading spinner with a package called nano spinner that will run for two seconds while checking the answer. If the answer is correct, then we can say spinner success and move on to the next question. Otherwise, we're going to say spinner error and then call process exit with an argument of one. When a process exits, it usually has a code of zero or one. One means that it exited with errors. Zero means everything was fine. And what it will do is just kill the script right away. Let's go ahead and run that function and you should get a multiple choice question that when answered correctly will give you a green check mark and when answered incorrectly will give you a red X. Now all the other questions are implemented in the exact same way. So now let's implement the screen for the winner. The function will clear the console's current output and then format a message called congrats player name. Here's a million dollars. We'll then pass the message on to Figlet which is actually a JavaScript implementation of a popular program implemented in the C language. What it does is generate ASCII art from text, which is really useful for making your non-programmer friends think you're some kind of genius. On top of that, let's make it look even more spectacular using the gradient string package. It's kind of like chalk, but instead of a plain color, it creates a color gradient. And now we can await each step in the process for a complete command line tool. It may seem trivial, but knowing how to build your own CLI tool can be extremely useful for productivity. I do it all the time for personal projects and for clients. Now the final thing I want to show you is how to share it with the world via NPX. It's actually really easy. All you have to do is go into the package JSON and add an entry for bin that points to your index.js file. From there, run npm login. You'll need to have an npm account where you can publish all your useless packages, then run npm publish to push your code to the cloud. Congratulations, you just deployed a beautiful command line interface. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.